Hey Girl Scouts, my name is Heather and today I'm going to teach you how to read a topographic map. We'll break down all the different pieces of the map and show you how to use each one to find your way along the trails. We're going to start on my sidewalk and using all the information on our map, we're going to work our way through the yard and attempt to climb the beautiful, yet treacherous, Mount Juliet. The first piece of the map is nice and easy. It's the title. This tells you exactly what area you're looking at. If you're hiking in California, you want to make sure you don't have a map of Michigan. Our map is titled Heather's House, which is exactly where we want to be. So we're off to a great start. Next, we're going to look at the legend, which is also sometimes called the key. This is your guide to all of the symbols on the map. Looking here, you can see that the brown sections are buildings, blue is a pool, the dotted line is our trail, and so on. As we walk down the trail together, we'll refer back to the legend anytime we see a new symbol. Next, we're going to look at the scale. Sometimes it can be difficult to look at a map and judge distances, so the scale makes that easy. Each section tells you exactly how long a piece of the trail is in real life. For example, if we walk a trail this long on the map, it means we're walking 15 feet. Some maps will include distances right on the trails. For example, this section of trail between our start and our first gate is 47 feet, but many maps won't include this information, so you'll need to use the scale. When you use the scale, you want to find an item that you can place right up against it. You could use a stick, a rock, I'm just going to use my finger. So you place it right up against it and see how wide your item is against the scale. So you can see my finger is five feet on this map. So then I can take that same item and move it directly to the map. So remember, this is five feet. So on this section of trail, we can go five, 10, 15. So we can estimate that this section right before the curve is 15 feet long. The next piece of the map is the compass rose. This shows the orientation of north, south, east and west. If you wanted to walk south, you would walk in the direction of the south pointing arrow. While many maps are oriented so that north is in the top position, this is not always the case, so be sure to double check your map. Before you start hiking, you want to make sure you're oriented in the right direction. This is especially important if there are two trails starting from the same point, you want to make sure you're on the right one. So we're going to do that using our compass. Now, most of you have smartphones that have compasses built right in. You can open up the app and it'll tell you exactly what direction you're facing, but it's always a good idea to know how to use the real thing too. If we look at our map, our trail starts out by heading in this direction. According to our compass rose, that means we want to walk east. So let's find east on our compass. To orient your compass, Spin the device until the floating, magnetized arrow lines up with your orienting line. In many compasses, instead of lining up an arrow, you're going to line up a red needle. Once those are perfectly lined up, it means that your arrow is pointing north. You can now use your compass to accurately tell direction. This now points north, east, south, and west. So our compass is telling us that back here is north, and this way is east, exactly where we want to go. So let's start hiking! As we follow the twists and turns of this path, we come across a new symbol. And whenever we see a new symbol, we should always refer back to our legend, where we can see that this is a gate. So we know that pretty soon, if we follow the trail correctly, we should see a gate up ahead. Now that we're through the gate, we've reached an intersection where one trail veers left to the north and one continues forward to the east. It's hot outside, so let's take the shorter trail to the mountain. To determine the shorter route, we're going to add up the lengths of all the remaining trail sections. This map has distances between waypoints labeled, so it makes our job easy. On unlabeled maps, you would use your scale to estimate the length, like we talked about at the start of the video. First, let's look at the trail that goes north. The first section from gate to gate is 30 feet, and from the gate to Mount Juliet is 21 feet, so 51 feet of trail total. 
Now let's look at the trail that goes east. It's 36 feet to the next gate, then another 30 feet, and then 14 more to Mount Juliet, a total of 80 feet. So heading north is the much shorter option. But hold on a second, our trail passes right by a new symbol. So let's look at our legend before we make any rash decisions. Wait, for real? This yard has tigers? <laughs> take the long way around. As we continue to the east, you'll notice these light green lines across the trail. You can see they're also surrounding Mount Juliet. These are called contour lines, and they're an important part of topographic maps. Contour lines indicate a change in elevation above sea level. That means anytime your trail crosses a contour line, you're either going higher or lower. If your trail runs beside a line, but never crosses it, that means your trail is flat. Each line connects points of the same elevation. For example, this line represents 1,000 feet above sea level, and even if we follow it all the way to the other side, you can see that it still represents 1,000 feet. That will never change. High points are indicated by closed loops, the ones that have no other loops inside of them. If you can find these on a map, you'll know the location of every hill and mountaintop. Not all contour lines are labeled, but don't worry, it's very easy to figure out. The height difference between the lines will always remain constant. So if this line is 1,000 feet high, and this line is 5,000, with three lines between them, we know each line represents 1,000 feet of gain. So this line would be 2,000, then 3,000, then 4,000. Lines representing round numbers like 5,000 are often drawn in a darker color just to make the map easier to read. One of the biggest benefits of contour lines is knowing how steep a section of trail will be. For example, on this map, if I climb this hill from below, I'm crossing all of these points of elevation in a very small area. That means the hill is steep. The tighter the contour lines, the steeper the climb. But if I climb from up here, I'm spreading out the lines of elevation over more distance. This means the climb will be much less steep and much easier. With all of that in mind, let's look at our map. You can see here that each of our contour lines equals one foot, with the highest ring, which remember is the top of the hill, topping out at two feet. The contour lines have plenty of space between them, which means it will be a nice, gradual climb. But once we get to Mount Juliet, the contour lines are much tighter together, which means a steep, difficult climb. There are seven parallel lines here, which means that the closed loop in the very center, the peak, is seven feet high. So let's continue down the trail and see what this little hill has in store for us. Nice and easy, just like those contour lines said it would be. From here, we're going to follow the trail up to the next building, go through the gate, and then follow that trail all the way around to the final gate. From there, we should finally have a clear view of Mount Juliet. Okay, there's the building and the gate. all the way around the building. And there's our last gate. There she is, Mount Juliet. Super steep, which is what we saw in those tight contour lines. Now all that's left to do is climb. you reached the summit and more importantly you learned how to read your map so the next time you're out in one of our parks check out the map and see if you can identify all the parts you learned about today and then try to plan a route for your group if you have any questions please reach out to your troop leader stay safe out there on the trails leave no trace and thanks for watching <laughs>